Good morning. It is Evan Salinas. And I'm Estella Hernandez with Hernandez and Associates. Thank you for joining us on another YouTube video. So if you haven't already, um, check us out. If you have any questions, HernandezAssociates.com and at Hernandez and Associates on social media. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to contact the website. We have a lot of great information on there. So this week, we're going to be talking about the question. This is an age-old question. What type of entity should I apply for a TABC permit with, right? We get asked this question pretty often than not. Um, and of course, the asterisk, we're not CPAs or attorneys, so please seek tax advice, seek your CPA, and if for uh, legal advice, please seek your attorney. Exactly, yes. So, you're applying for a, a TABC permit, what kind of uh, entity do people use? It, it depends. Uh, like I said, it depends on what, um, when you talk to your CPA, tell them what you're wanting to do. Say you're wanting to open a restaurant or whatever type of um, establishment. And um, and then go. they'll discuss it with you as to which benefits you as far as uh, ta for tax purposes. You know, sometimes I've had people start out with one type of entity and then in the middle of their permit, um, you know, they want to go ahead and um, change, switch to another entity because their CPA told them that it was uh, better on tax, you know, as far as taxes. Uh, so, but make sure you research, all, you know, let us know that you're going to, going to do that um, because then we can kind of advise you or suggest how it's going to uh, pertain to your TABC permit. And, and it's good to go ahead and talk with your CPA, talk with all of the, get all the advice and information you need first and then so when you apply you apply correctly mm -hmm. yes you can change it later on but just know those are additional fees and costs that you're going to have to incur you know whenever it changes and then you have to understand too when you change later on you have to change everything i mean mm -hmm. ein number mm -hmm. bank number right. uh, you have to get new bank accounts you have to get all new everything all over again mm -hmm. and so if you got auto drafts coming out from different vendors just know this could be kind of a headache to switch over right so you know really do that due diligence up front um, another thing is that sometimes people ask us if they can use an LLC corporation they already have for other businesses. This, mm -hmm. this comes up a lot for business owners that have other businesses, whether it be a trucking company or real estate mm -hmm. or anything. You know, they, there's tons of different businesses they have. They want to get this. Can I use the same LLC? And we always tell them again refer them over to their CPA uh, because they might want to keep everything separate. Um, you know, so again, we will tell you to talk to your CPA about that. And, and really the reason that we say that also is because you got to understand if something happens at your premises, whatever this is, restaurant, bar, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. somebody gets hurt mm -hmm. and it gets tracked back to the business. Now, of course, we're not attorneys. We're not, you know, giving you legal advice, but they can come after that business and any business. If it's the same LLC, everything that's tied to it. Mm -hmm. Right. So you make your own decisions as far as what you're OK with. But mm -hmm. just know that's what you're, you know, for the extra However, five, six hundred dollars it is to get another entity. Just know what you're setting yourself up for, you know. And then sometimes they'll, um, uh, the people, the individuals that are go, uh, that are listed under that particular entity might mm. not have the proper documents. They probably have documents uh, for them to be on that LLC or corporation or whatever, whatever's necessary that's required by the state uh, secretary of state. But then when you get to TABC, there's different requirements. So that's another thing too, uh, before you set up uh, whatever type of entity, give us a call. We'll suggest a few things and that you can discuss with your CPA that you can go over and then go from there. There have been times where once they get, you know, it's already set up and, um, and then they come to us, they say, okay, we have it. And it's all these individuals. And then we start telling, asking questions and then they're going to, they have to amend the entity. And so we don't want you to incur any extra, you know, fees. charges and fees that you don't have to. Uh, but that does happen where people will come to us. They've already gotten the lease even under that particular mm. entity. True. You know, um, and uh, so that's another thing. Uh, so anyway, 
we just wanted to go over this with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you have questions, hernandezandassociates.com at Hernandez and Associates. You can DM us there. You can comment. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you would like to get a hold of us. I'm Evan Salinas. And I'm Stella Hernandez with Hernandez and Associates. Thank you for joining us on another YouTube video. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, and um, comment. We love your comments, emails. Go to our website. Send us a message. If you, you know, have any questions, we'll try to answer it the best we can. And remember, we're not CPAs or attorneys, but we're here to help you with your licensing. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye.